All right, the Colonel Bob Sheridan back here. This is our live shot inside the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. We've had a couple of fights uh, for you already here. If you're just joining us, Ernie Sanchez won a unanimous decision over Coy Evans. And then we get a chance to see the outstanding Dodie Boy Penaloza dispatch uh, Jesus uh, Lule Rea in the second round. And uh, Penaloza really looks to be a very, very strong young professional fighter from the Philippines as well. Now we're waiting for our four round lightweight battle to get underway with Corey Sigwich, uh, Sigworth rather, making his way into the ring and we'll get it underway for you momentarily. Crowd, as you can see, just beginning to start to come in. They missed a couple of interesting fights, but the people that want to see and be seen won't be here for probably another hour, of course. So uh, a really exciting night of boxing here in Las Vegas. For me, it's especially exciting. It's a world title fight number 9, 32, 33, and 34 for me. And I'll tell you this, I get just as excited. This is Sigworth making his way in from Denver, two and one with one knockout. He's thrilled to be fighting. Uh, this is his first fight this year, so he's real thrilled being as late in the uh, year as it is from Denver and coming to Las Vegas to fight is always a thrill for a professional prize fighter early in their career. And for Jose Ramirez, who hails from California, to make the trek one state over is the world of difference coming from California to Nevada and then again coming a little further from the border to Las Vegas. This kid had an extensive amateur career. Tonight he becomes the 49th professional fighter with the name Jose Ramirez. Yes, I took time to look that up and count. 49 Jose Ramirez that have boxed over the years. A 2012 Olympian. In 2012, he won the U.S. National Amateur Championship. He won his first round over the French fighter over in London for the Olympics. And then he lost to the fighter from Uzbekistan in the round of 16. He's really thrilled to be on this stage in the same card with uh, Manny Pacquiao. And he must be a good one because I see Freddie Roach has come in with him. So when this 20-year-old Jose Ramirez as Freddie Roach, who's got a rather busy, a busy evening on tap tonight, and that he has uh, Manny Pacquiao to take care of and get the gloves on. Uh, it's a pretty uh, indication that Ramirez is a good one. Here's Lupe Contreras. Let's get this one underway. Ladies and gentlemen, we continue with the action here at the MGM Grand Garden Arena, once again proudly being presented to you by Bob Aram's Top Rank Incorporated, in association with Tecate con carácter, wonderful pistachios. Cinemax's new series, Banshee, premiering January 21st. Smart Communications of the Philippines, the Weinstein Company's brand new movie, Django Unchained in theaters Christmas Day. Tencel America and our host, the MGM Grand Las Vegas. This bout, scheduled for four rounds in the lightweight division. The judges at ringside are. Tim Cheatham, Al Lefkowitz, and Ricardo Ocasio. The referee, Vic Draculich. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white trunks with red lettering. He weighed in at an official 136 pounds with a professional record of two victories against one defeat with one of his victories coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Denver, Colorado, Corey Allen Seguard. His opponent across the ring in the red corner, wearing red trunks with white trim. When he stepped on the scales, he weighed an official 137 pounds with an outstanding amateur career. With 147 victories, 11 national titles, and the all-time record holder with six consecutive USA Boxing lightweight golds. This summer, he proudly represented the USA at the 2012 London Olympics. And this evening, he is making his professional debut from Avenal, California. Y puro la piedad Michoacán, Mexico. 
José Ramírez. All right, gentlemen, this fight's scheduled for four rounds. You receive your instructions addressing you. Again, I want to cost you. Any punch below this area here going to be called low. Any punch below this area here going to be called low. That said, I want you to obey my commands, protect yourselves at all times. Touch them up, touch them up now. Good luck to both of you. By uh, referee Vic Draculich. Vic Draculich gives the final instructions here. We're set to go. Ten point must scoring system. No standing eight count. No three knockdown rule. But it cannot be saved by the bell at any round, and only the referee can stop the fight. This is scheduled for four. The big showcase fighter is Jose Ramirez. He's in the red trunks. Sigworth from Denver, Colorado is in the white trunks. Right away, you see Ramirez want to work on him. Ramirez, although he's in his professional debut, is a seasoned fighter. All kinds of amateur, including the Olympics, and all kinds of uh, amateur titles he's won. This kid's a very, very good fighter. And the mere fact that on the night of a huge fight for Manny Pacquiao, Freddie Roach, his trainer, is out with him before the Pacquiao fight. Corey's a very awkward guy, and he's getting more awkward as he gets nailed by the right hand. Tries to bounce left and back to the right, but Maria, uh, Maria, Ramirez whacks him with that right hand. Sets it up with a straight left hand with a, a jab, and then the right hand behind it. Corey's having a lot of trouble with this guy right now. Ramirez is a very uh, sort of impatient in the early going because remember it is his professional debut. So he's starting very, very fast with this guy. He hurt him with that left hook. Corey's trying to come back with uh, something uh, a little bit uh, on the powerful side, but nothing's working for him whatsoever. Looping right hand, left hook to the body, and down goes Corey. It's up to four and five. He should be able to continue. Sigworth is just. Uh, looks so awkward and having so many problems a big tall gangly guy he's 5 11 he's only an inch tall he's bleeding from the mouth to get clipped and Vic Draculich you're gonna have to watch now if there's any more clear headshots you're gonna have to stop this fight because uh, Sigurd just is, can't hang in there with this guy at all here he is switching around and southpaw uh, is Corey and in the white trunks just having all kinds of problems with Jose Ramirez Ramirez Humbles him with the left hand, then the right hand, chops at his left ear, loads up the right hand, blasts him to the jaw, hits him again, it's time to stop the fight, and the referee, Vic Draculich, mercifully steps in and stops the fight. That'll be scored as a first round technical knockout victory for Jose Ramirez. Well, we wanted to see him. We knew he would start fast. We told you about his pedigree. The guy's a sensational fighter, and we're going to see a whole lot more of him on top rank boxing. Jose Ramirez, Freddie Roach has got another good one. Well, between this kid and the kid we saw in the last fight, Ernie Sanchez, some future to these guys, I'll tell you. Man, oh man. Jose Ramirez was on top of uh, Sigworth right from the get go. Corey had no shot in this at all. And he was in his fourth professional fight. Ramirez in his debut, but much, much, much more experienced and talented fighter than Corey Sigward. Felt bad for Corey, but that's the way it goes. This kid's got a lot of ability. You're looking at Jose Ramirez, the former Olympian. We'll show you the knockdown. And look at the power. Hard body shot. He's already hurt. And the body shot is what hurt him really bad. There. You see him skipping around. He's hurt right now. Another body shot to the other side. Another body shot. Three body shots in a row. Then that one there, just on the ribs by the liver. Watch it again. This is the same thing, different angle here. See the body shot? And that's what hurt him. So he was actually dropped by the body shot. And now you'll see the stoppage. And at this stage, Vic Draculich realizes that this is no opponent for. Jose Ramirez with his pedigree and he's getting pummeled from pillar to post and just as I called it so did Vic. So it's a first round technical knockout victory. Well let's get the official particulars with uh, Lupe Contreras. Lupe. Ladies and gentlemen a series of unanswered blows obligates the man in charge referee Vic Draculich. 
to call a halt to the action with an official time of two minutes, five seconds of the very first round. Your winner, by way of technical knockout, in his professional debut, Jose Ramirez. Well, uh, a sensational debut for this kid. We knew he was going to be strong. Uh, very difficult to find the type of opponent for a guy because after after all, it was a professional debut. But uh, Corey just couldn't hang in there with him at all. Jose Ramirez totally outclassed him and. It showed when uh, Vic Draculich had to stop the fight. Uh, Ramirez certainly looks to have all the tools that he should be a terrific fighter. So look for more on Top Rank Boxing with Jose Ramirez. Ladies and gentlemen, we return to the action here inside the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Tulsa, Oklahoma. This is boxing. This is top rank presented by Hall of Fame boxing promoter, Mr. Bob Arum. This bout is scheduled for four rounds in the middleweight division. Our judges at ringside, Henry Ellick, Don Griffin, and David Sutherland. And the man in charge at the sound of the bell, Mr. Gerald Ritter. Introducing first out of the blue corner. He weighed in at 161 pounds, wearing black trunks with gold trim. He brings a record of four wins with only one defeat. Two victories coming by way of knockout from Lexington, South Carolina, Jordan Wee. Introducing out of the red corner, he weighed in at 162.4 pounds, wearing white trunks with black trim, making his professional debut from Chicago, Illinois, now fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, the legend lives on, Nico Ali Wall. Grandfather turned pro in October of 1960. And he steps out in those vintage trunks for his pro debut. Going full rounds. You've already received your instructions. You to obey my commands. Protect yourself at all times. Let's have a good, clean, hard fight. Both your trunks are good. Touch your gloves. And let's get after it. Nico Ali Walsh gives up two inches to Jordan Weeks. Weeks, Timmy is two years into his pro boxing career. He has more experience as an MMA fighter. Sometimes extra or unordinary inside the ring. Ollie Walsh right to that jab. Got a little bunny hop to him early on. Those anxious moments early in your pro career. Looks for the right hand. Look at the way Weeks is shooting the jab. Across his body, leaning his head to the right. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Unorthodox. Beautiful shot right there. Right hand came in from Ollie Walsh, and another right hand came in from Nico. How about seeing those vintage trunks, original Muhammad Ali trunks from the 1960s? Made by Everlast all those years ago that were gifted to Nico. And they are back to business. One thing that's glaring at me is the bounce that Walsh has. Nice boxing. Oh, right hand! Knocked down, scored by Nico Ali Walsh here in round number one. Seven. Hey, walk to me. Walk over here. Put your gloves up. Come here. 
He's playing to the crowd. Said he wasn't going to emulate his grandfather. He goes to the ball. a big right hand that comes in from Nico. Jordan Weeks is hurt. Ollie Walsh is slugging away upstairs. Big shot comes in again. Weeks is so defensively flawed. And this fight is over. A TKO victory for the grandson of the GOAT, Nico Ali Walsh, against an overmatched Jordan Weeks, takes care of business, and the journey has begun. Just the basics right here. Nice one two, straight down the middle. Like you said, Tess, Weeks. Nothing special, but look at that nice, short, crisp right hand over the top, right down the middle on the chin to send Weeks down to the canvas. And this is the end of the fight. Having that killer instinct. That last knowing, right hand. You got to understand, knowing that your opponent is hurt, that's hard to teach. He knew he had his man hurt. He went for the kill, and he got it done. Great job by Ali Wash. And you can see the tears of joy immediately from... His mother, Rashida Ali Walsh. Walsh. His grandparents were married back in 1970, a year before Ali fought in the fight of the century against Frazier. Let's make it official. The career is underway for the Ali name at this level. Ladies and gentlemen, here inside the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in beautiful Tulsa, Oklahoma, referee Gerald Ritter calls a stop to this bout at 1 minute 49 seconds of round number one. Declaring your winner by technical knockout. The legend lives on, Nico Ali Wall. See that tattoo on that right arm? He says, I keep my grandfather with me every single day. And that right arm with grandpa tattooed on it did damage there. Here's Bernardo. Nico, how did your debut, as you talked to Bob Arum here, how did your debut measure up to your expectations coming in? First of all, I want to say Alhamdulillah, Allah Wekba. All praise be to Allah. Um, yeah, this lived up completely to my expectations. This is nothing, uh, I mean, I only dreamed of. It's very emotional. I mean, it's been an emotional journey this whole ride, these last couple months. Um, it's my Uncle Must's birthday. He passed away a couple years ago. Shout out Must. Um, obviously, my grandfather, I've been thinking about him so much. Um, I miss him, and it's just uh, an emotional journey. And thank you to Jordan Weeks and, and his people. I mean, tough, tough kid. Um, so I think me and him made a little bit of history tonight. So it was a great night. Now, Nico, carrying the weight of a name like your grandfather's, Ali. Many may have crumbled. You're only 21 years old. Describe how you were able to manage that. Honestly, it seems like a lot of pressure, but to me, it's just my grandfather. Um, to everyone else, to you guys and to the crowd, he's the greatest fighter who ever lived, maybe the greatest person. But to me, he's, he's the greatest grandfather. Stepping into this ring, wearing these Everlast trunks that were made for Muhammad Ali. They were a gift to you. Describe what this meant to you tonight, what it means to your family, what it means to the family legacy. Um, I'm never wearing these trunks again. Uh, man, they were my grandfather's trunks. It's Like I said, it's so emotional. I mean, it's, this is a dream come true. Um, it means so much. I've got to thank Sugar Hill. I've got to thank B.B. Hudson, Mike Joyce, Richard T. Sloan, all these guys. I couldn't have done it without them. And, I want to also thank Jimmy Gifford because I would not be here without Giff. Who are these gloves going to? I don't know who these are gl gloves are going to, but you know, another piece of uh, history tonight is just being next to uh, Bob Arum right now, and I want to thank you so much for believing in me and taking, you know, the the bet. I'm, I'm a believer in jeans. <laughs> <laughs> well. You know, it's, it's really something that you can't write. The fact that his first promoted fight was my grandfather and he's promoting me, it's ridiculous. It's something that would be in a Hollywood movie. This is amazing. 1960 gold medalist. We just had the silver medalist come here, Duke Reagan. It was about 60 years since your grandfather's pro debut and the Ali name lives. Let's get into the fight because yes, you went to this man, Sugar Hill Stewart, yes, because sir. 
you wanted to learn. You said you're a beginner. Describe what it was like to land that right because that's the Kronk seal of approval. Let me tell you something. I've been, I've been like in camp for months and he's been perfecting my jab for months. You know, he's not a very, he, he's not the kind of coach who throws everything at you at once. He wants you to be 100% in one aspect and you know, the jab and right hand is all I threw tonight. That's it, and, and it works. So I just, anything he says I listen to, I trust him a thousand percent. Congratulations, Nico Ali Walsh takes the first step in what we hope will be a long career. Get back to you, Joe. Boys. Ladies and gentlemen, this next bout is scheduled for four rounds, featuring super featherweight. Judges are Jerry Roth, Art Lurie, and Patricia Morris Jarman. And your referee in charge is Mr. Kenny Bayless. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, he weighed in at 130 pounds. He wears the white and gold trunks. He comes to us from El Centro, California. His professional records, two wins, one defeat. Introducing Roberto Apodaca. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner. He weighed in at 131 pounds. He wears the black trunks with gold trim. He is from Grand Rapids, Michigan, now residing right here in Las Vegas, Nevada. He is a 1996 Olympic medalist for the United States of America, making his professional debut, introducing pretty boy Floyd Mayweather. Ring center. I want to caution obey my commands at all times, keep the fight clean at all times. Good luck to both of you. Touch gloves. Mayweather, a very interesting story, Al. His father, Floyd Mayweather Sr., a welterweight contender in the 70s and 80s, convicted in 1993 of drug trafficking, serving a five and a half year prison sentence at a federal prison in Milan, Michigan. And Floyd says when he was a kid, his dad would hold him up and got him involved in boxing. And he says by him being a pro, he wants to be successful so that when his father comes out of jail, he'll be able to lift up his dad so that his father won't be eating bologna sandwiches his whole life. <laughs> that he was wants steak for his dad. That was the way he put it, and I thought eloquently so. He says he speaks with his dad almost every day, and his father does give him pointers. Very close-knit family and uh, a family, Al, that as we learned in the Olympics, Floyd takes the last name very seriously, what a Mayweather is. And, of course, Roger Mayweather, uh, his uncle who is working with him in his corner, a two-time world champion, a tremendous performer, and his uh, uncle Jeff, who's a very, been a very fine professional as well. This one is scheduled for four in the super featherweight division. And Mayweather... Left nothing in the dressing room as he makes his pro debut. Floyd Mayweather is a power puncher. He's a guy who can hurt you and knock you out with one punch. Well, in his Olympic debut on the 22nd of July, we saw it when he was winning his fight very easily against Bakhtiar Teleganov of Kazakhstan, and he stopped him at 57 seconds of round two. Never thought I'd have to say that name again. And let me say this. While I was very impressed with your work at the Olympics, I continue to be impressed. Haven't, you, haven't, you haven't kicked the name in six months, let me tell you. Not that anyone would know if it was right or wrong. <laughs> Just past the midway point of round one. Mayweather is not using his jab, I don't think, as much as uh, they would like him to. If they were to take a peek at this tape, they would, they would like to see that jab going out there more. Well, he told us yesterday he did not want to slug. He wanted to box. And, oh, Apodaca was hurt by that exchange. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You want some more? Club. Apodaca very warily says, I'll take some more. That was not a low blow either. I believe that that punch was very legal, the body shot. Good double left took by Mayweather. He doubles up with the left. Well, we said he had power in his punches, and he showed it there. He can, he can bang. Took a left hook, Apodaca. And he hits him with a right. And Apodaca, just a matter of time. 
Floyd Mayweather can throw combinations on the inside. We saw it with the double left hook. His only problem is that sometimes he leaves his head exposed, and that's something they'll work on as he continues to move along as a pro. And he did showboat a little bit in the amateurs at times, and I guess in the pro game, it's a little more sellable. <laughs> This one is scheduled for four. Floyd Mayweather Jr. making his pro debut. There is Mayweather digging with the left hook to the body after going upstairs, and that body punch had an impact. Round number two underway, scheduled for four. Mayweather in the black trunks, Apodaca in the white. These are super featherweights. Mayweather will not celebrate his 20th birthday until February the 24th. You're going to look at some of the numbers in round number one. Mayweather, oh, oh, there goes Akadaka, making, making those numbers probably academic. And I do not think he's getting up, and he is not. This one has been stopped in round number two. So Mayweather beats Morrell by a round. And in his pro debut, he stops Roberto Apodaca. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time. 37 seconds of round number two. This bout is stopped for the winner by knockout in his professional debut, pretty boy Floyd Mayweather. So Floyd Mayweather gets the win. And don't forget. Well, the Mayweather name is synonymous with uh, great boxing. And as uh, you see, Jeff and Floyd Mayweather and... Uh, Roger Mayweather, former world champion. I know that they're proud of your work, and you must be happy with what you did here in this first pro fight. Yes, you know, first of all, I'd like to, you know, thank God for giving me this opportunity to come out here and don't do what I had to do tonight. And um, I also like to thank my dad um, and my uncle Jeff and Roger, you know, for being behind me and helping me while my dad's gone right now. Well, your dad hopefully uh, sometime soon will be back to join this scene. Um, you were able to work the body exceptionally well uh, during the course of this bout. Um, yes, because you know Mexicans are known for taking good headshots, so you know, I had to go to the body tonight. The uh, the jab, though, you didn't use your jab as much as you normally do. I, I actually thought we'd see a little bit more of that. Did you not need it? Uh, well, I need a jab. You can never um, disregard your jab. You always need your jab, but, you know, I took my time. And I came out here, and I, do, I done what I had to do tonight. Okay, let's take a look at the end of the fight. Certainly there's no criticism of the way you got this done because you were able to get him out with uh, some terrific body shots. Tell us what's going on here, Floyd. There's that big hook downstairs. That's what you put him down with the first time as well. Um, you know, I just got to say, you know, I'm proud of my performance. All right. I think let's, ask, let's ask Roger uh, to give us a little report card as he watches you knock him, knock him down. What do you think, Roger? Well, I knew if we had him hurt the first time, he should touch him a little more. But mm -hmm. besides that, I mean, he performed very well for kids just coming to the program and using a different type of, not hair gear, and mm -hmm. using small gloves. So he performed very well. But... There's like a little more things he can do, but as he gets to be fighting more often, it's going to come to him naturally, okay. more so than right now. All right, we're going to back. Jeff, I know, proud of you as well. Congratulations, Floyd. Let's go back now to Bob Pop at ringside. All right, Al. Floyd landed 36 power, 25 of his 36 power shots were landed for a whopping 69%. Well and now, ladies and gentlemen, the action continues, courtesy of Win Las Vegas. And brought to you by Top Rank Incorporated. This contest presented in association with All Star Boxing, sponsored by Tecate Con Character, Wingstop, the Wing Experts, and Value Casa de Bolsa. The three judges scoring at ringside are Adelaide Bird, Lisa Jampa, and Dick Halk. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, Russell Mora. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 10 rounds of boxing for the WBO International Featherweight Championship. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black with yellow, official weight, 126 pounds. As a professional, 24 victories, including 15 knockouts, two defeats, two draws. He comes to us from Mexicali, Baja California, Mexico. International featherweight champion Jose El Negro Ramirez. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing yellow with blue, 
official weight 125 pounds. Tonight, he makes his professional debut. He is a two-time Olympic gold medal champion from Odessa, Ukraine, Tommy Gospada Vasil Haitelomachenko. One second. One co one cornerman. A little bit, a little bit. Centering. Okay, gentlemen. We went over the rules in the dressing room. Trunks here are good. Trunks here are good. You know what I expect? A clean fight. I want to remind you, protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. God bless. Touch up. Mouthpiece it. You know, there are many elite amateurs who have the talent to fight experienced pros or even top pros for a few rounds. The difference between amateur and professional is can you go those 10 and 12 grueling rounds? You're exactly right, because it's a whole different game when you take the headgear off and you put on smaller gloves. And we've seen some, some fighters that have been able to do it, Guillermo Rindial, for example. And Lemachenko is just as decorated, but we'll see if he has a medal. Bob Barham called him this week the best amateur fighter he's ever seen. Bob Arum, like most promoters, has never been accused of understatement. <laughs> no hyperbole from Mr. Arum. He does sign our paycheck. <laughs> well, all that aside, Ramirez is an experienced professional, and we're going to find out if Lomachenko truly is an experienced professional tonight. Because you're going to have to be to beat this kid, and this kid's taking it right to him right now. Remember, uh, the kid Ramirez looks a lot shorter, but according to the official statistics, they're both 5'7". So we'll see how that works out. To me, he looks shorter. And if he is, you get a situation with headbutts. What does Lomachenko do when he gets a headbutt? And he just walked into a good left hand. Well, that's oh. exactly it. And he takes a knee. A body punch, I believe. Yeah, he did get hit with a body Seven. punch. It might have been in the Eight. area of the liver. The Nine. way he reacted, the way he's running Good around. Luck. So Good that luck. answered the question in Ari. Well, it certainly is a professional punch. It's not an amateur punch when you hit to the body like that. No, and clearly Lomachenko's got a lot of power to go with all that skill. Well, I, that, uh, you know, we're trying to build up Ramirez because we've seen him fight so many times. And uh, Lomachenko Watch just made head. me a believer. Stop. So I don't know. I'm going to have to agree with Bob Barham until Larry, we prove him wrong. And you know, Colonel, not only is he uh, <laughs> a veteran here, Ramirez, but he's also got, uh, got some pop in his punches with 15 knockouts to his 24 fights. Yeah, but you know the thing is, his punches look like they're just little pops. And this guy, Lomachenko, sitting down in his punches very heavily with his shots. Southpaw landing clean shots. His arms are supposedly the same, but something's wrong with his tail. This guy's definitely got a longer reach. He's definitely taller. I don't know who did the measuring, but I disagree with uh, all we can do is give you the official statistics as they're provided to us. And there was some nice body work, quick combinations to the body by Lomachenko. And that, I believe, is what caused Ramirez to drop to one knee earlier. And did you see the athletic move that uh, Lomachenko made? He almost squatted down, almost Stop. touched the knee to the canvas, and right back up. That's a sign of very, very, very strong legs to be able to do that a la Pernell Whitaker, who could do it with two feet and two legs. He is very athletic. Uh, yeah, that's what we're finding out, Larry, here in the early going. Mario referred to his uh, record. I think he had close Stop. to 400 amateur fights, lost one of them, and beat that guy who beat him twice. Wow. Wow. And you mentioned his athleticism. He runs marathons. He swims in the ocean. He's extremely well conditioned. That's something he, he and his team really hide themselves on. All right, well, he won the first round anyway, 10-8. All right, you guys take a look at this knockdown. And it was a beautiful counter left hook to the body. The delay, of course, is because it was right on the liver. Taking a little step back, Lemonchenko. Oh. Dipping down, coming up with a beautiful left hook to the body. Go back, go back. And it had some pop to it because Ramirez had a delayed reaction and went to one knee. When a guy has that delayed reaction, it's because 
it takes about a second for it to go from the liver to the brain and then he realizes it. a lot of guys could get paralyzed one that stands out to me was Bernard Hopkins on uh, Oscar De La Hoya yeah, well and it shows that Ramirez has some professional experience uh, along with the message to the brain uh, was I think I ought to take a rest here yes that was a, <laughs> some veteran uh, and, that, and, that's, that. and that's the hardest thing to get a fighter to do because their instinct is to fight not really when they're in a war to go ahead and take a knee and Colonel since that knockdown Ramirez has come back and has been as aggressive as ever took some hard shots at a combination by Lomachenko Lomachenko extremely elusive yeah, he's got it all. I mean, as I watch him, he's got the footwork. He moves side to side. He's got a lot of power uh, as the body shot shows. Now, here he was. That's uh, definitely, he fell over the leg. And right on top of it, uh, Russell Moore, a very good referee here from Nevada. I don't know if that was a professional move by Ramirez or an amateur Ab flop. Ab <laughs> you know what that was? <laughs> Absolutely a professional move by Ramirez. <laughs> that was him being a little too fast for his own good and being a southpaw and getting the feet tangled there. <laughs> Can't get what they're cheering in. They're cheering Mexico. Mexico. Oh, Mexico. Mexico. Very much a pro Ramirez crowd here as, as the early Marquez supporters get in their seats to watch some of this undercard action. And and you guys are both right in that you're pointing out. This kid's fighting a hell of a fight Stop. right now. <laughs> this he's right in this thing. He's right in this thing. And and this is a good fight for Lemonchenko as a debut. And he just shifted to Southpaw, Lemonchenko. He is. I mean. To, to convention. Yeah. Switched around. And those hands, aside from having some pop, those hands are really fast. This kid seems to uh, really be the five-tool player, if you will. Well, you know, just as I think he's doing, I'm like the albatross for, for poor uh, Ramirez. Just as I point out that he's doing something good, he gets nailed. You better stay away from me, young uh, Jose. I love his toughness. I love his grit. I love the fact he's hanging in there with clearly a guy that's got a lot, a lot of tools. 400 amateur fights, but he does fight like a professional. That was one of the things that interested Bob Arum in signing him was that he already fought with the pro-like style as an amateur. That's why Lomachenko, I said, where do you get your confidence from? Coming in wanting to fight a 10-round debut, and he said, I already fight like a pro. Because he is a pro. Well, he fought, he fought those six fights at five, they were five-rounders. They all went the distance, by the way. It was a tournament. Right, that's a wealth of experience there. Closing seconds now of round number two. And Ramirez did a good job. Dina, Dina. Coming back and keeping it competitive. Larry, stop picking on me with my math. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Talk I, about a guy using I gotta his hands. Bring like I got to bring something to this play. <laughs> You're doing a good job. You behave yourself. We're looking at you. <laughs> No. Oh, wow. look at that. The heads came together there. Not intentional. No about that. Good. And of course, no I see knockdown. That. I see that. Time. And Russell Moore is going to say, good. You're good. Okay. Watch your head. Watch your head. Let's so go. the heads came together. Another tough thing for Ramirez. And that's why I don't think that these statistics we have on these two fighters are 100% accurate because I saw that little short head come up against that big tall head. And they banged and clashed. Well, that'll happen often when you go up against the southpaw. The southpaw. Right yeah, and it can then, especially an aggressive one. Feet get tangled, which we've seen. We've seen the head clash already. Well, of course, the other thing is they're not fighting okay. with headgear as a professional, and heads do bang and yes. cuts do occur. It's another thing you've got to be able to uh, deal with. You got to deal with it, and you got to factor it in and adjust a little bit. You notice the way Ramirez, when he comes in, he never comes straight in. It's kind of like a he's zigzagging his way in, and I like that. This kid's a good fighter. And he's having a tough time with this guy, but he's the one that's forcing the fight. Lemonchenko's got some slick moves stepping past this guy. He reminds me of a, the guys that put those things into the back of a bull and they hit the bull the side door. Step. Not the matter. Good door. clean right hand by Ramirez there. I'm impressed with Ramirez after taking such a hard body shot, maintaining his aggression, realizing that he's got to stay on this kid if he wants any, ch any chance at winning because you're not going to outbox him. 
very, very entertaining fight. I'm really enjoying this. Wherever you're watching around the world, I know you are too. A lot more coming up. Let's head to let everybody in the Valley Inn down there in Christchurch, New Zealand. Georgie Calvin, the boys. Stop! You know, there is already a, a highly ranked Russian featherweight, Pradovich. Uh, unbeaten fighter also. He's a real world leader, isn't he? And there's another really talented, deep talented uh, division with Mikey Garcia and, and Abner Mares and Johnny Gonzalez. Lomachenko could really have some exciting fights out. And the footwork of Lomachenko. I love his footwork, Mario, that you're bringing out. It's terrific. Closing seconds now. And he always seems to be on balance. Yeah. Suertalo, yeah. Except for the one time he was thrown down by... Uh, oh. All right, the bell ends round number three. As we go to round four here, Thomas and Max Center. We're in the United States of America in a place called Las Vegas, Nevada. Glad that you're going to be with us. The Colonel, Larry, Mario, Christina. And our principal's in this. Jose and Vasily. We're on first name basis here. Vasily looks like he could let his hands go and really, really put on much more of a show and be a lot more aggressive because he clearly has the advantage in speed and I think strength, but he's choosing to counter punch, use his footwork, and maybe get some rounds in. Maybe Ramirez is a tougher tougher kid to figure out than we think. Doing a good job with his jab. Uses his shoulders, typical of a Mexican fighter, use whatever you got. They'll use head, shoulders, knees, slow blows. They're just tough, flat out tough. And when things aren't going his way, like they aren't right now, they get tougher. You have to think the, like, the longer this fight goes. Obviously, Ramirez, with 28 professional fights, has been in deep waters, has been in late rounds, but Lomachenko, this is going to be his first 10 rounder. Well, like you mentioned, Christina, he's in excellent shape, so I don't think conditioning is going to be an, an issue, but mentally, it's a whole other thing. Absolutely. Nice counter right hook. That was silly. If you may have just been joining us because many countries join us at different times throughout these telecasts and these world Stop. telecasts, Christina Puncher made a great point that this kid, he cross trains, he's a swimmer, he's a distance runner, a marathoner. Uh, besides all his boxing that he does, he's got the uh, washboard stomach and the uh, strong shoulders and striated muscles of his upper arm. So this kid has got a perfect build uh, for a fighter. And that's because of all the training that he does and the different aspects of cross training for boxing. And his family. Nice, beautiful. His family, well, clearly fitness is a top priority in the Lemonchenko house. And while the Klitschkos aren't that popular, one thing you got to say about them, you may not like this style, but by golly, they're in shape all the time. Phenomenal shape. Meanwhile, Lemonchenko's got a little bit of a mouse and a cut, I believe, under his right eye. Well, we'll see how that holds up because the cut uh, can be a real serious problem because the Mexican will know how to go after it. I assure you. Stop. Joey Gamash is handling the cuts for Lomachenko. Well, it is a little bit of a mouse, and hasn't, blood isn't pouring from it, but uh, one more shot there, and uh, he might see blood. I don't know if he's seen it. And another beautiful body shot. Those body shots are unbelievable. Four, it's up to four five, and five. He six, may not be able to get up. Seven. It's up to six, seven, eight, nine, okay. and ten. He counts them out. It's all it's over. A we're... knockout. How about that? Like a bolt out of the blue. He hit it's the midsection right on the lever, and it's over. What was so impressive about that, too, Colonel, is he didn't even plant his feet. He, it was a counter shot as he was pivoting, and he got hit, and he got him right on the liver, the same shot that he dropped him with earlier, but this time there was no delayed reaction. Out. Because, of his, because of his quickness with his feet and his hands, he hits his opponent with punches he doesn't see, which are always the most dangerous and often the most devastating. Wow. He never saw either of those body punches. 
They were, they were, they were so. It was so impressive. It was hard to, it was hard to see them even as a, a viewer here. I'm impressed by this kid, Larry. He's an impressive young guy. Um, what you, what we always say about a young fighter is, let's see what happens when he get hit on the chin with something. But uh, maybe he won't get hit on the chin for for a while. He had a tough customer in front of him tonight. No slouch in Ramirez, who really came at him. And here's another look at the replay and the beautiful body shot. He threw it twice, actually, and the second one really did the trick. Here's another look. Countering off of a left hook and a beautiful uppercut hook to the body, right in the liver, and Ramirez had seen enough. People might think that you know, he didn't want to fight anymore. That's not the case. That is a paralytic punch. I talked about earlier when uh, Hopkins did it to De La Hoya, and this was the third time it happened to him in this fight. Those two shots there, and then back in the first round where he's whacked right on top of the liver again. Your body can't take it, and you cannot recover. You're in a position where you look like you can get up, but believe me, you can't. This Ladies Michael. and gentlemen, the end comes at 2 minutes 59 seconds of round number four. The winner by knockout victory, winning his professional debut and winning the WBO International Featherweight Championship, the fighting pride of Odessa, Tommy Gaspadal, the Seal. Ladies and gentlemen, we continue with the action here at the Thomas and Max Center once again proudly presented to you by Hall of Fame boxing promoter Bob Aram's Top Rank Incorporated, along with MP Promotions and being sponsored by Tecate Born Bold, Win Resorts, recipient of the most Forbes five-star awards, Lilai Guo GW66, the most popular entertainment company in Asia, Hennessy, who encourages you to never stop, never settle, Casio G-Shock, absolute toughness, let's shock the world, and China's leading sportswear brand, Anta. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout four rounds in the lightweight division. The three judges are Tim Cheatham, Robert Hoyle, and Patricia Morse Jarman. At the sound of the bell, the man in charge, referee Jay Nady. Introducing first, the fighter in the blue corner, he enters the ring wearing white with red and black trim. When he stepped on the scale, he weighed in at an official 133 pounds. One of the amateurs to emerge as one of the stellar fighters of the last Olympics representing Honduras at Rio 2016 this evening. He is making his professional debut, fighting out of Davie, Florida, Teofimo. Across the ring in the red corner, wearing white with black trim, he weighed in at an official 133 and three quarter pounds. In five pro bouts, he maintains a record of three victories against one loss and one bout even. Representing La Colonia del Florida, Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico. Iswar Siqueiro. Referee Jay Nady gives the final instructions. It's the 10 point must scoring system, no standing eight count. There's no three knockdown rule. The fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. Only the referee can stop the fight. And Tio Fimo Lopez is a new pride of top ranked boxing, 150 and 20. As an amateur fighter, that extensive amateur career took him to the 2016 Olympics. Signed. Uh, with top rank, he fought for Honduras because of the politics involved in USA amateur boxing. Now to keep these guys straight, since they both have on white trunks, the guy with the black trim is Sicarios, and Lopez has the red trim on his trunks and his name on the back. Quite a pedigree from the Lopez in his uh, professional debut. Won several amateur titles over the years, including the National Golden Gloves title in 2010. National PAL, that's the Police Athletic League uh, Championship. He had an opportunity to get some great sparring 
with champions like Sean Porter and Guillermo Rigondeau. In terms of boxing, he's a highly skilled uh, fighter. The matchmaker's at top rank, really high on Lopez as a professional. Top rank also signed 16-year-old uh, Gabriel Flores Jr., the youngest ever to sign. And they consider him a, a super prospect too. So Carrios turned pro in Tijuana in July of 2015. The unanimous decision win, back-to-back -back unanimous decision wins to begin his career. His next three fights all in Tijuana. He had a split decision draw, a unanimous decision draw, and a split decision win. He's a boxer, he's not a big puncher, and that's why he's such a close decision. He's gonna call out a knockdown, and as well he should. It's up to five and six, he'll take the standing eight count. Good shot, got him, and down he went. Sicarios has got to watch the power of Lopez because that's the difference of these two guys. For Sicarios' third fight this year, and is Lopez on the assault after him? Nice straight jab, not panicking, he's taking his time. Try to catch him in the chest. Sicarios with his head down, doing everything he can to keep Lopez off. Lopez, in his debut, trying to finish this thing up. As I mentioned, Sicarios' third fight this year, first time outside of Mexico. And, you know, going into the fight, he had to stay real busy. He's already been down one time here in the first round of the Schedule 4 rounder. Joining the power of uh, Teofimo Lopez Jr. and why the matchmakers. Oh, he caught him with a solid right hand! And he goes down for the second time! That was a clean right hand right on the side of the chin. He takes a seven count. He'll take a standing uh, a full eight. And now time has been called. I guess his mouthpiece is out. Jay Nady, the referee, take plenty of time to get that mouthpiece right. Gets Lopez, who's had him down twice. Remember, there's no three knockdown rule, but if the referee so determines that he's taking too much punishment, uh, he can stop the fight if he chooses to. So here comes Lopez, who's been impressive in the early going here. First round of his fight, having Sicarios down twice. Sicarios remembers three and one with a draw and three knockouts in his own right. Wait, he's calling that a knockdown. Is he got hit in his and his uh, hands hit the canvas and Jay's absolutely right. So instead of a 10-7 round, it's back to a 10-8 round. Both guys down. I want to see the replays of that. Mighty Cohen, our producer, director, will have it all for us. Okay, there's the right hand, and sure enough, his right hand hit it, and down he goes there, and hits again. Now, this should be the second knockdown, which goes off against the ropes. That's a solid right hand. No question about that one, and there wasn't any question about the first one either. But it's that one at the bell that I'd like to see if we have it to see just what Jay Nady uh, saw, and I know what he saw, he saw the hand down. Here we go, I knew my boys would have it for us. Loaded up in the back of the head, off balance, you can't use anything but the bottoms of your feet. Yeah, this isn't amateur boxing, my friend, you were down. So he's about to win the round 10-7, but he was down as well, so it's a 10-8 round. Box. All right, here we go to round number two. I expect Lopez is going to be furious because uh, Jay rightly so called him down. You cannot touch the canvas with anything but the bottom of your feet. If you do, you're going to be called for knockdown. Jay says no knockdown that time. Box. One thing about Jay Nady, he's real definitive. If it's a knockdown, he calls it. If he doesn't think it's a knockdown, no such uh, luck for Lopez there. Lopez is getting impatient now. He wants to load up on uh, Sicarios. Sicarios a little bit gun shy right now. Caught him again with a solid shot, then behind the ear, but nothing on it. Good body shot. He's got Sicarios kind of reeling all over the place a bit here in round number two. Remember, Ishwa Sicarios has the black trim on his white trunks. And Lopez has the red trim on his. That's a knockdown too, I think. No, no, he said he wasn't. There's no punch behind it. So 
These guys have got to get used to the fact that they can't be putting their hands down, but Jay didn't call that a knockdown because there was no punch behind it. Just kind of off balance. This is a film they use at the conventions to show what good refereeing is. Oh man, he gets clipped with that shot. And another one, that's a knockdown. So Zacharias is down for the third time in the fight. Walks towards Jay. Jay takes plenty of time to check out the eyes. Round number two, there's been four knockdowns so far. Right at the bell, Lopez went down. Just a little flash sort of thing and off balance. There's a body shot. And that's his second time down. I don't know if he can recover from that because that's a liver shot. Eight, no, nine, and ten. It's all over. That's a knockout. I didn't think he could recover because it was a liver shot right on the liver. So Teofimo Lopez, who I've been told by the matchmakers, Bruce Trampler and Brett Goodman and Calmaretti, that this guy should really settle into the pro game terrifically. Well, he's 1-0 with one knockout, so he couldn't settle in any better than that. Look at this, that's a hard shot behind the ear. That was the first knockdown in the uh, second round of the fight. And Jay lets him get up to eight, but the next one is a body shot. No, that's the same, that's the same punch. That's the same uh, series there. That's still the same first knockdown. Now let's see if we're down to the second. Oh, there's the body shot that hurt him. It didn't look like much, but it was a left hook right on top of the liver. And he cannot recover from that, nor could most guys. So, one thing we like from the Tiafimo Lopez, we've seen him hard to the body, hard upstairs. He looks like he's gonna be a good one. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Jay Nady reaches a count of 10 with an official time of two minutes, three seconds of round number two. Declaring the winner by way of knockout in his pro debut, Tiafimo So that's the story. Teofimo Lopez makes an impressive debut with a first, uh, rather a second round knockout. Big smile on his face, the blue hair in the braids to match the trunks. Pro debut for Xander Zayas. Gets this man, Genesis Wynn, who is looking to spoil the party. Wynn in just his second fight as a pro, fighting out of Denver, Colorado, by way of Los Angeles. Made his debut in September of last year, so he has been inactive for quite some time. And we'll see if Isaias, Isaias can take advantage of that. The age discrepancy is pretty clear. The 17-year-old against the 31-year-old. And expect to see that big smile from Xander Zayas for a long, long time coming. <laughs> Let's get the first introduction of Zayas' career from Lupe Contreras inside the ring. We continue here at the Reno Sparks Convention Center. This bout set for four rounds or less in the welterweight division and once again being brought to you by Hall of Fame boxing promoter Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated in association with Let's Get It On Promotions, Atlantis Casino Resort Spa, and being sponsored by Geico. Our judges at ringside are Pat Shalene, Dave Moretti and Max DeLuca. At the sound of the bell, the ref in charge of the ring, Jay Nady. Presenting first, the fighter standing in the blue corner. He enters the ring wearing blue with white and gold trim. He weighed in at an official 145 and three quarter pounds. At the age of 16, he made history. This 11-time national amateur U.S. and Puerto Rican champion became the youngest ever to sign a pro contract with a Hall of Fame boxing promoter. Tonight, this high school student makes his professional boxing debut out of Davie, Florida, and representing San Juan, Puerto Rico, Xander Zaya. His opposition in the red corner, wearing silver with black trim, he weighed in 
at 144 and one half pounds. He enters the ring for the second time as a pro with a record of one victory, fighting out of Denver, Colorado, Genesis. All I do is win. I know this Genesis, man. He, I ran into him in, in the gym a couple of times. He's not a bad fighter. Four rounds will be in my commands. Good luck. Touch gloves. Let's go to work. It's definitely not a pushover fight for Zayas in his debut. Zayas talking to him yesterday, Bo Mack. One of the interesting things I asked him, at least it was interesting, his answer was, asked him what separates you from other fighters your age and makes you think that you're going to translate your amateur success to a pro success. Number one thing he said, footwork, which I thought was very interesting. So we'll keep an eye on that footwork in this four-round fight. And we'll see all that experience from Zayas, who has been fighting since he was just five years old, 11-time national and Puerto Rican champion. You see that footwork bouncing inside, outside against yeah. Wynn. Good, good range. He's not to work his feet well. Zayas, I asked him to get a chance to watch that Robesi Ramirez debut where Ramirez disappointingly lost in the four round unanimous decision. He said he did. And he said he knows he's got to come out firing, use his combinations. Work on those power punches. He's got a man's body for a 17-year-old. Yeah. Win in the black and silver trucks. Oh. Gets knocked down right in front of us. The first knockdown at the hands of the professional, Xander Zayas. How about that start, Bo Mack? That's a good start for 17-year-old Xander. It's a good start for anybody. Comes right back over the top with the right hand. He's going to be looking for that right hand again. And he goes down again. And Jay Nady calls the fight. Xander Zayas, the win in round number one. Easy work, easy work for Xander. So both Zayas and heavyweight Jared Anderson, teenagers making their pro debuts here in Reno, both with first round knockout victories. Well, you can tell that the company is looking for longevity in these fighters. <laughs> That's right. Well, between Zayas, Anderson, Sonny Canto, Gabe Flores, you go down the line. A lot of young, exciting fighters under the top-ranked promotional banner. The first knockdown, which we had trouble seeing because it was literally blocked right in front of us, came from that straight right hand. Yeah, I like the way he, how he galloping. See how he galloping? That he throws his jab, throws it more or less like a throwaway jab to set up the right hand, which was really great. First knockdown of the career of Xander Zayas. Straight right hand right in front of Bob Arum, who you can see there on the far side of the ring. And then Zayas came right back at him. Yeah. He threw it around the glove this time. Set it up with the jab again. Right at the guy set it up with the jab, he was coming around the glove. And then, just for good measure, the right hand to the body. And Jay Nady wasting no time, waving off the fight. Jab, jab around. Down to the body. Beautiful. Yeah. Textbook. Textbook. Hey, a lot of amateur experience you can see from that kid. So Xander Zaya's pro debut is an absolute breeze. The knockout victory in round number one. Ladies and gentlemen, upon close observation, referee Jay Nady determines that the red corner is unable to continue, obligating him to stop this contest with an official time of 1 minute 24 seconds of the opening stanza, declaring the winner by way of technical knockout in his pro debut, the youngest ever, Xander Zaya.